Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on CPUs, but as a whole the series is going to cover memory, hard drives, NVMe, uh, how to update my BIOS, how to update iDRAC, how to uh, install a Windows Server operating system, all this plus much more. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, we're going to get rolling. Um, as I said, this series is going to cover a ton of different topics, so hopefully uh, something is relevant to you. Uh, this video is going to specifically focus on CPUs. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the different options, what we recommend, and we're going to even uh, show you how to install and take one out. Uh, so we'll just get we'll just hop into it and get going. So first off, there's two CPUs inside the uh, R620 server. It's an LGA2011 socket. That means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V1 and E5 2600V2 series processors. I will note in order to get the V2 to work, you do need to make sure that you have an updated BIOS and firmware, which will be one of our uh, videos later down the line that we'll show you in case yours isn't updated. So if it isn't, just throw in a, a cheap V1. Uh, you only need one of them. Um, uh, get your machine uh, up to date and then you can pop in a V2 in case that's an issue for someone uh, out there. Um, as far as uh, the different options that we recommend, it really kind of depends on what application you're looking for. On the low end, uh, I recommend something like uh, E5-2660, E5-2670, or an E5-2680. All these are really good 8-core options. Uh, you can get 2.2 uh, gigahertz, 2.6 uh, gigahertz, or 2.7 gigahertz. All those, like I said, are really good options, okay? On the value side, what we like to call value CPUs, where they're still you know, a good price point. Uh, you're going to get more than the low end, uh, but they're not going to break the bank. Uh, I recommend an E5-2660 V2, E5-2670 V2, and an E5-2680 V2. All of these are... 10 core processors uh, ranging from 2.2 gigahertz, uh, 2.5 gigahertz, and uh, 2.8 gigahertz. So uh, overall you get um, a pretty good range there uh, for um, the, the speeds in the processors there. Okay. Now on the high-end side, which is honestly what I would recommend for the R620, because even the high-end ones really don't cost that much because V2s are at such a good price point nowadays, um, I recommend an E5-2690 V2, E5-2695 V2, or an E5-2697 V2. All these are going to be really, really good options. The uh, E5-2690 will be 10 core, but the 95 and the 97 are both 12 core, um, and we'll list all the other uh, speeds as well for you there, uh, but that those are some of the options that we recommend, um, and there's a plenty of other really good options as well. Uh, but that's just what I like to build with personally. Okay, um, and actually right now uh, we have a bunch of the E5 2695 V2s in stock, so we've been building a bunch of those uh, at a really good price point. So. Um, all right, now what we'll do is we'll uh, show you how to physically uh, pull out your old CPU to install a new one to upgrade it. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. I'm safe to work inside our R620 server. I uh, wanted to put everything in front that we're going to need for this upgrade. So a uh, screwdriver, thermal grease, a uh, rag to clean in case there's a mess from the old thermal grease, and a CPU with the tray to put the... Uh, the current CPUs on to okay so we'll go ahead and we'll get rocking and rolling here so first things first just make sure latch is set to unlock pop it open pretty much like any Dell server you've been in before nice and easy so once you get in uh, you're gonna notice there's an air baffle uh, that's covering part of the heat sink so you will need to remove the air baffle okay and uh, one thing I should have noted is that the air baffle also lets you know that this is CPU 1 and this is CPU 2. Uh, it's also listed on the motherboard as well, like it says right here, but you won't be able to see on the camera, but it says CPU 2 and CPU 1 right there, but did want to note which is which. All right, so we're going to um, uh, start over here with CPU 2, and we're going to pull out the current processor that's in there, which is a pretty old one. It's an E5-2620V1, um, so definitely something that needs to be upgraded. So uh, this is going to be pretty simple. Just going to get our screwdriver, and we are going to uh, get the heat sink removed. Okay, so now that the heat sink is loose, just lift it straight up. 
okay? And the reason I say straight up is sometimes uh, there's thermal grease on the bottom here. You don't want it uh, falling off. Sometimes it'll be really dry depending on how old it is, and you'll get those clumps, and they'll fall off, and you just don't want it getting into your motherboard or especially getting into the uh, CPU pins because if they get in the CPU pins, it, that becomes a hu huge problem. Uh, could start throwing memory channels off plus a number of other issues. Um, so that's one thing that I always just tell people to be very careful about, okay? So um, this is an older CPU, so I'm not really uh, as concerned about um, preserving it. Sometimes, you know, we might reuse our CPU, give it to uh, another friend, put it in a different server, whatever the case may be, we might want to reuse this uh, CPU. Um, and if that's the case, I n I'm normally going to be uh, a little bit more careful, but in this case, I'm not as concerned. This is honestly uh, such an old CPU. My biggest concern is I just don't want the thermal grease uh, potentially falling off into uh, the CPU pins. That's really what I'm most concerned about right now. So I'm going to get uh, my rag here. I'm going to actually clean it because there's not too much thermal grease um, that I feel like I can get the bulk of it right now and kind of clean up this around the socket here, which is really what I want to do, just to make sure it's not going to uh, flake off on us here. Okay. So there's still plenty more that I could clean off, um, but that's good enough that I don't have to really worry about it coming off. Okay. So you'll see right here, it says the first step, you want to push this latch down and out, and then it'll come up. Second step, same deal. You can push this latch down and out, and it'll come up. And this one, when it comes up, will actually, there's a lever right here that'll get released where the CPU socket can come up. So now push this back down and you'll see it pushes the socket up. Okay, so now we are actually in and we can physically grab our CPU. Okay, so this is where you do need to be very careful. Um, this is where I see uh, people will unfortunately pull this out too fast, especially for an older CPU that they don't really care about, and they'll accidentally drag the corner of the CPU down across the pins. And when they do that, they just mess up a bunch of pins, and then all of a sudden uh, you have a whole big problem. You put the new CPU in uh, and it's not working properly, and it's not the CPU's fault, it's the socket's damaged. Okay, so the other thing I want to point out when I lift this out. I like to grab on these two sides right here as opposed to right here uh, because right here I just have more surface area to uh, firmly grab the processor. So what I want to do is grab right here and just lift straight up as we talked about. Straight up. Okay. So again, just straight up. Um, you can see how many pins are in there. Uh, we want to uh, just make sure those pins are uh, protected and in good shape. Okay. So now that I've uh, put the CPU into the tray. I'm going to grab our upgrade, which what we are installing right now is an E5-2680 uh, V2, okay, which is one of our value procs that we talked about. Um, so uh, on the CPU itself, there is a little gold arrow right here, and you'll notice it's only on one of the corners, right? It's on this corner right here. So if you look at the motherboard over here, kind of move the latch out of the way, you see that white arrow? That white arrow is letting you know that's how you line up the processor. You want this face in that direction, okay? So now we're going to install the processor. Um, and there's two ways that, you know, I've seen people really do this. You can uh, take the edge that has the, uh, the arrow on it and kind of push it to the side and lower the processor in, almost like a hinge. Um, I personally like to come just straight down. Uh, again, I'm just worried about the pins. Taking care of the pins is my biggest concern. Uh, preserving the integrity of the system is really all that I'm concerned about, okay? So I am going to uh, just come straight in here, line the gold up, and just put it right down, okay? So again, uh, just being safe with it, not uh, letting any of the corners drag, uh, and just coming straight down is, in my opinion, the best way to do it, okay? So now we're gonna put this back together so we are going to uh, push this down, and this needs to come back over, all right? So we're going to push this down, and then we're going to come to the outside and in. And same thing over here, come to the outside and in. And now the CPU is physically installed into the socket. So here comes the fun, messy part. We get out our thermal grease, and um, we just buy a, a big... Uh, chunks of these or big uh, bulk tubes of these just because we use so much of it. Um, so what we're going to do here is I like to just draw uh, a square right in the middle and then kind of fill the square up because you want a nice uh, even balance here. You don't want too much thermal grease that it just uh, is all over the place. And on the flip side, you don't want too little because uh, you need it to actually cool the processor. Okay. So then I like to come to the outside and just uh, get a little bit on the outside here. And now I have a good amount. 
um, and then I will wipe this off with my rag just to keep it clean and put it away. So um, now that we've done that, when we put our heat sink back on, um, it's going to smush the uh, thermal grease down and spread it around nice and evenly. Um, some people will get the little uh, plastic pieces and uh, kind of like paint brush it on. Either way works. All right, so now we are going to put the uh, heat sink back in. I will note with this uh, specific model, the, um, the 620s, the heat sinks only go one direction, so just be careful you have it the right way. So we're going to put this back down nice and carefully. Okay, you see it's nice and flush in there. So we are going to get our screwdriver back out. And we're just going to get it, the heat sink firmly back on the CPU. Okay, so just like that. So you see, realistically, it's not a hard process. Upgrading CPUs, honestly, is, is fairly easy. Um, the main thing is just being really careful. Take your time when you're dealing with the pins. That's honestly my biggest takeaway for anyone out there is just be very careful with the pins. So outside of that, uh, like I said, pretty simple process. So, okay, well, uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. If you have any needs for an R620 yourself, uh, we have literally three or 400 of these in stock right now. Uh, we'd love the opportunity to, uh, to help you guys build out your data center. Uh, please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. And if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys.